Folks, from time to time, I'm asked, how do I make a looping DVD? A looping DVD. And so I'm going to do a little quick tutorial here. Hopefully, this cut to the chase. First of all, here I've done a trade show video for a company called Tough and Lot that makes this uh, very strong uh, cut resistant material. I mean, you can wear a t shirt or something or one of these jackets and you can't cut through it with a knife. Amazing stuff. Uh, so I'm not trying to sell them. I just want to let you know that uh, that's what this is. And they got a, I got a big long. Uh, uh, thing here that I've put together for them. They are a freelance client and they were showing this trade show video out in Vegas. So I did everything 1080p, exported it. Now I had to go to a DVD. You could do the same thing with a with a um, Blu-ray as well. You could, you could export this to a looping Blu-ray. I've done that many times before too. But so what I did, I put my whole composition together, rendered it out, and so now I've got a 1080p version of it here that I've had to size down for uh, for uh, DVD. And so I'm not going to go into the weather alls here. I'll, I'll, you'll know, of course, for a DVD, it can't be 10, it can't be 1080 by 1920. It has to be 720 by 480. But what I did, and this is in Premiere, we're going to go over to Encore here in a minute to make the looping DVD. But uh, what I did, I, I went ahead and I picked a template here for my sequence. I said, I said, uh, File, new sequence, and then I picked not this one. I went down to uh, DVNTSC, which is where you're going to have your DVD type settings, and I picked widescreen 48 kilohertz. This one right here. Okay, I'm going to say cancel for now because that's what this is. This is a widescreen. If you go over here and look at it, I could show you. If I can find it in here. <laughs> there it is, widescreen DVD. And if I click on the properties, you can see that that's what it is somewhere here. I don't have to actually prove that to you, but here, 720 by 480, but it's set for widescreen DVD. So, I, because it had widescreen aspect, right? So, I pull this all in here. Here's my whole uh, thing. This is my buddy Josh Kappas doing the voiceover for this. And PPE Industries. We look forward to providing you and your team members with the finest cut slash and abrasion resistant PPE. So I'm kind of promoting a little bit, my friends there at Tough and Lot, they do have an incredible prod product, but let's move on to what I did. So I exported this at the DVD standard, 720 by 480 widescreen format. I just did a file export. Uh, for those of you who, you know, you export your media here, I'll just go ahead for those of you that don't do that. You pick MPEG-2 DVD, and it pretty much does everything for you. You click on this to choose where it's going to go that doesn't go into this folder it's another folder i was working in but that's what it went to because it's the last one I had selected so you go to the you put it you put it over to a folder somewhere just these mpeg files and you choose your uh, settings and i'll hear i usually like to go about five six seven on this uh, as far as the bit rates variable bit bit, bit rates that seems to work really well and the, the dvd tends to look really great to me then you export it i'm not, I'm not going to do that right now so i've already done it i'm going to hit cancel and so then what you're going to end up with, you're going to end up with two files. You're going to end up with a, um, with a M2V file, an MPEG file. You're going to end up with a WAV file that matches up with this is the audio for it, and this is the video for it. Maybe I'll show you how you just, you can see here I've chosen a background for this called N NTSC City Lights. It's part of the uh, little preset downloads. You, you, can, you can get Encore CS6, which is what this is, but you have to download the content for it, all the little templates. You can make your own templates, but I like to download their stuff. And there's all kinds of little templates here for you know, whether you want to use you know, a menu or something here. Those of you are checking this out, you've probably already, there's the one I use. I use the standard definition. But those of you who have Encore, you're probably already familiar with this and how to populate all this with your stuff. If not, let me know. So then uh, I did a file new project. And I'm going to save a lot. Okay, I say, yeah, go ahead. I'll show you exactly what I did. And I did choose DVD in TSC. And I call this. You get to choose where you want to go. Tough and light video. I chose. I made a folder called that. Uh, and I call this Tough and Light 2. T-U-F-F-N-L-I-T-E-2. Okay, so I'll say okay. So now, uh, what you have to do, you have to bring that video in, right? I like to right click over here and import as timeline. Import as timeline. So that's going to the right place. That's where all my tough and light stuff is. And man, I went through so many drafts to get these people happy, but in the end, I think they were. And the video looks really great. It's playing out in Vegas right now. 
So I got to find my wide screen. Maybe I do it by date. Okay, so here are my last ones. I guess it was draft five that I did. So I'm gonna click on the video, which is an M, which is an MPEG two. Then I'm gonna click on. I'm gonna hold my control key down and click on the wide screen. So I got both of them, or, or the audio. So I got the movie clip and the wave clip. I'll say open. Boom, it comes in. So there's my tough and light video. And so uh, the way I did it, of course, was I went over here, I clicked on the me the uh, menu, you got different things, you got all kinds of little elements and stuff that you can use in here for your little, you know, whether, what you want to put on your DVD. I just went and chose the City Lights standard. So I think right, that's a sub menu, my bad. City Lights menu SD, then I just pulled it over here and it comes in with stuff that you don't need, like I didn't need setup. All, all I need is I'm making a looping DVD. I'll show you what I did. I, I deleted this. I deleted this. I deleted this. I left Play Movie. Of course, I changed the title so they'd have a, a title that they knew it was them. T U F F N L I T E Video Loop. Okay. So then, I now I've got the video here. This is the simplest thing in the world to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on the little pointer over your selection tool. And I'm gonna click on move, play movie. You can see it's a button since it's green. Link, it's not set, so I'm gonna grab the little twirl thing here. I'm just gonna click on it, left click on it, and pull it over here to this little white thing. A little white thing underneath that gold thing. That is the beginning of the video, right? So there it knows. I'm going to the beginning of that video. And it shows I'm playing chapter one. Okay, so the other thing you got to do here right now, that little bitty arrow right there tells it that, the, that the, the video is the first play. We need to tell it to make NTSC menu the first play. I'm going to click on that. I'm gonna, then I'm going to right click and I'm going to say set it as first play. I don't like for them to put a video in there and not even show them an intro thing. We could have set it up that way, but I'd rather they have some little intro uh, slate board there. So when you click on this, this is going to play this video. Let's, let's just go off again and check it and see. Some freezing my snag, it might be. See, see I'm playing widescreen DVD chap, draft chapter one, playing the first beginning of this. Now I'm going to go over here to the timeline, right? I'm going to click on it. I'm going to tell the timeline what to do at the end. Well, at the end, we could go back to the menu, right? Well, that wouldn't be looping. What I'm going to do, I'm going to say end action. We're going to grab that one and pull it down here again onto this. Okay. So now what's going to happen, you're going to hit the play button. It's going to go to this and play. And then when it gets to the end of this timeline, it's going to loop back to the beginning of the timeline. And it will loop and play on and on and on and on and on. So then what I would typically do is say file. First of all, I'm going to check the project. First, I would save it. Then I would say file, uh, check project, and hit start. If there were any problems, it would pop it up here. Believe me, it lets you know if there are any problems. No problems. I've already tested it. I'll close it. It will work. I would say file. I would say build. I like to build a folder. I don't like to just go straight to a disk. I like to build a folder, so I've got it if I have to make additional copies. So you would browse to wherever you want that folder to go. I've got a location here that I've done in the past. And I could give it a name, Tough and Light DVD. I'm not going to do that because I've already done it. You hit build and it, 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 it builds out. It records to that folder. Now I'm going to close uh, that for a minute. I'm also going to close this for a minute. <laughs> so uh, let's see, uh, save. I'll say no. I don't have to say that. I already saved it. So what do we end up with? Let me, let me navigate over to these files. And so I made a Tough and Light uh, DVD. And so here it is. And uh, I, it's inside a folder. I double click on it, and there's the video underscore TS. This is the file that has to go on the root directory of a DVD to make it loop. You, if you double click inside it, you see it's got the stuff in it right here is the video. These are the commands and stuff that tell it to loop and, and how to behave. So this whole folder, though, has to be named exactly that on the DVD. So now I'm going to put some DVD media into my hard drive over here. Or not my hard drive, but my DVD drive. Okay, friends, I've just loaded blank DVD media into uh, my, DVD, my DVD burner on my computer, and I'm waiting to see what... Here it goes, exactly what I wanted to see. 
I used to think you had to have some sort of fancy burning authoring software for this, but no, you don't. The Windows stuff works just fine. So what you want to do here, you want to choose burn files to disk. I don't, I'm not going to do it with this. I, I like to just go this option right here. And you want to, you want this bottom one selected burn files and groups and the individual files that can't be edited or moved after this, this will actually close the disk out and it's like a master disk and that's the one you want. You can call it whatever you want to. T-U-F-F-N-L-I-T-E. And you can say next. And then you just basically drag this into this, right? And there it goes. And now that DVD is ready to burn. And what do you do? You see burn to disk right here, right? So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to burn this to disk. Tough and light. Record speed eight times. I had some 16 time media, but this is a uh, eight time media, I guess. And so we're going to record that to the disc. Okay, guys, I sped that part up so it would go a little faster, but it didn't take too long to burn this. It takes a little while here at the very end to close out the DVD. So when it comes to the end and it sort of pauses for a little while, that's what's going on. It's, it's closing out all the other sectors so that this DVD will behave just like a DVD you play in your television. Okay, we've come to the end here. So do you want to burn another one? In this, time, in this instance, I'm going to say no. I'm just going to say uh, finish. And so I'm going to close this. Now the, the DVD just spit out. I'm going to put it back in here. I'll show you what it does. We'll let it come up in whatever player it comes up in. Maybe I'm not sure what I, kind of player I have on here, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so it came up in full screen mode, but here it is. So here is the DVD, and so if I hit play movie, the video will start playing, hopefully. That's actually a piece of digital juice royalty free music that I used for that. So you know, don't have the YouTube police don't have to jump on me. I own that piece of music. I'm gonna go here to the very end so we can see what happens when it gets to the end. Available. Please contact us today to discuss the safety challenges at your location and to discuss the safety solutions Tough and Life PPE will provide. And there it loops right back to the very beginning. See that? It went from the end back to the beginning. And it will do that over and over and over again as long as you need it to. That's it, folks, how to do a uh, loopable DVD for a trade show or whatever other reason you might have to want to loop it. Peace, everyone. Thanks. Subscribe if you like.